Hello, beautiful souls. I am Valeria Maritza at Healing Through You. I am an infinite being of light, and so are you. Today, the guides want me to talk with you about fear. Oh my goodness, this is such a big one. I have been working through my own personal fear for a couple of years now. <laughs> And it is amazing how much stuff continues to come out. And this is not like I'm not a scary person. Like, like I'm not like I don't get scared easily. Um, I was one of the first people to go like on the um, what do you call those the the roller coasters and stuff when I was a child. My brothers and sisters were not really ready to go and i will always be the one who was sent out first to do these things and then they will come back and of course i would get two rights because of my bravery um and i had been you know this type of person and personality throughout my life but when we do the work and a lot the deep work of like what is inside of us stuff that we don't realize we are carrying with us comes out and for me it has been fear it has been like a huge part of my journey in my awareness and awakening it has been a huge part of something that i wasn't even aware i was carrying because for being brave for being the strong person i'm a taurus um i I'm a very, very strong Taurus. And a lot of the things that the Taurus sign, astrological sign carries is strength, right? And that's really has been me. And throughout the years, I've always been looked at or seen as this strong person. I remember specifically parts of my life where I felt like, okay, I am done. I do not want to be strong anymore. That's it, right? And it just doesn't go with who I am. So even though I could say that in the moment, I'm tired of this, I'm done, let somebody else take the reins of the of being the strong one. Um, it's just part of me. And so it just doesn't last that long. But in being strong, and showing up as strong, and showing up as someone who has resilience and goes on and continues on, I have also been taking that fear to feed my strength, and some of it goes inside our bodies and it remains there. So this is the stuff that has been coming out for me, uh, especially when I do breath work uh, during meditation, that stuff comes out. I, I get physical shakes of releasing this stuck energy from my body. Why am I telling you so much about my personal story here? Is because I was not aware at all that this was something that I had or something that was within me or something that was stopping me, right? Preventing me from doing things that were even scarier than going on that roller coaster as an adult, right? So some of the things that were really scary to me and some of you might really relate to this was coming out of the spiritual closet, right? When I first started down my journey, this, this is turning into a whole me thing here, <laughs> but the guys are saying, trust, trust, just keep talking. Okay, I'm trusting. Um, when I first started my spirit, down my spiritual journey, um, I didn't tell anyone. It was just like me, my mentor, whomever was in the group with me, but none of my friends and our family knew what I was doing. One of the things that, uh, one of the reasons I didn't tell anyone is because I invested in myself a large amount of money, which I have never, taking that type of step towards me before and it was scary and i really didn't know what i was getting out of it or what i was going to get out of it and i was so afraid of being judged by those around me for wasting quote unquote my money on something that i couldn't explain what it was so that was like a huge secret that I was scared. And I was so scared to let people know about this. And as a matter of fact, as spirit is always here to support us, always um, creating the situations and the events to happen for our highest good. When we're scared, when I was so scared of this, the universe created a situation in which I had to say something to my husband, um, the closest person, person right in, in my in my nucleus of my family here and it all came out 
and it was something that wasn't planned. I was, I did not want to tell him. I, I was just like a, the scariest thing, yeah, to tell my husband that I spent all this money on myself and that you know I was doing this type of work and the type of thing that a lot of people, especially religious people, which my husband is not religious, but he did grow up with the Orthodox uh, Christianity, uh, believing that anything woo woo or anything witchy um it's it's a bad thing it's evil right it's related to not being with god and so it's a very scary thing for a lot of people and including myself now i knew that everything that i was seeing feeling and going into felt good to me and that is your compass this is your compass of is this right for me am i doing something that's good is this something in going down the right path because my brain all of the things that i have been learning and, I, and have been taught throughout my life have are telling me that this is the wrong path and however when i do it or when i go into it it feels good to me i learned when i was this is like one of my last years in a teaching this is before COVID hit actually it was the last year of school that we were at school in person and then COVID hit and closed down the schools. But that last year, something within me um, told me that it was really important to teach meditation to my students. And I was the art teacher. So um, my eighth graders, I started with my eighth graders and I had them do the last 10 minutes of class. I taught them how to meditate. And I would have them just be quiet and, and, and sit still and listen to this meditative music um, through this app, Calm. And I did this for them. And, you know, there was some resistance, but then I started seeing some kids that were really into it. Some kids would just like lose themselves in the meditation and they could, and they would come out of there saying, oh my gosh, this is, it felt so good. This is my favorite part of the week, the week, right? Like that, those 10 minutes of meditations that I was teaching. And I just knew deep within that this was something, a tool that I was giving my students that uh, they were going to be able to use later. And then of course the world shut down and COVID hit. And I knew that this was the reason that I was led to teach this to my students and give them a tool that they can use so they can calm themselves, their anxieties, their fears as the world was shutting down and everything was changing. But, on the other side, I had one student who told me that meditating was not good, that her mom told her that it was an evil thing. And I had never heard this before. I had never heard this point of view. You know, I'm very naive in terms of like what is or what isn't in terms of like um, what organizations are teaching people. And I was taken aback because I was like, really? Like, wow, that I had no idea. And of course, you know, she didn't have to do it, but she kind of was curious and she wanted to do it and did, but she did share that with me. And I didn't know that that was a teaching. Later on, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, um, some uh, somebody mentioned to me that the church, the Catholic church, which my son goes to Catholic school, um, was against yoga. And that another thing that blew my mind, because I had no idea, like, what does yoga have to do with anything evil? I had no idea. Well, it's because for me, when I came upon yoga, when I learned about it, it was an exercise thing. It was a thing to stretch your muscles. It was a thing to, you know, relax. That's what I thought it was. That's what it was for me. I didn't know anything about the history or where it came from. However, if you took on research where it comes from, it is a part of bringing mind and body together. It's that whole thing about being one with everything, which is against the Catholic church. And so for the church doing yoga or um, doing things with uh, participating, this is the word that I was coming up with, uh, participating in yoga is not something that is good. And if you've never heard about this either, like, you know, please raise your hand because I was floored by this. I had no idea. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. Like, really? And um, I really, really had no idea that that was something like that. And it, yoga is so accepted throughout. So, so many people, even, you know, people who go to church, do this right and now here's another another eye-opening thing 
Um, so I started taking my son to, to church because he wanted to, because he goes to Catholic church. So he wants to be, do the things that they're teaching him. So I started taking him and I, I'm going to this really progressive uh, church, Catholic church. And I want to specify that it's Catholic. So it's not like just any progressive church. It is the Catholic faith. But within them, these priests that are there are really progressive. They're very happy and jolly and they sing and they make jokes. And it's uh, completely different than when I went to church when I was a child. Um, not only that, they have specifically used the word meditation several times during their sermons. And I was also surprised about that because I had the idea that the word meditation comes from the Asian cultures of meditating, perhaps from the Buddha, right? The, the monks, all of that stuff. And like, why would the church use that word here? And it's because everything is coming together. Everything is coming back together to the oneness, to realizing that, you know, meditation is a prayer or prayer is a meditation, huh? Right? So we all in different cultures, in different places, do the same things essentially and we have different names for them and we are at a time in the world where so many people are becoming aware and awakening that this is possible to make those links science is catching up to spirituality right a lot of the things in spirit in the spiritual world that have been there for thousands of years like uh, tai Chi or, or studying the meridians or um, acupuncture, all of these really ancient practices to heal the body. Now, science is actually catching up with it and proving that, oh, actually, this does help in whatever way. And everything is merging together because the amount of people who are awakening, becoming aware, and the energy as a collective of the planet is rising. So because of all this, everything is coming together. And those of us who are doing the work or stepping into this new paradigms of spirituality, going within, becoming one, feeling, seeing, and perceiving things that are not physically there for um, the physical eye or the human eye to just see, it can be really, really scary still. And that fear comes from all of our past lives. Yes, and going into the past lives part, uh, you are an infinite being of light, an infinite soul. You have been here in existence forever, not here on earth, but here on existence forever. And your soul has incarnated in a human body to do the human experience here on earth. And you have been here many many times you have been everything you have been a man a woman a child who crosses over early you have been good you have been bad you have been evil you have been you know someone of power you have been rich you have been poor you have been a slave you have everything you have been everything you have as a soul experienced pretty much everything and you are here now and we carry a lot of times most of the time we carry the wounds of our soul from past lives. We can also call that wounds and traumas from our ancestors. So <clears throat> when you see a family pattern that continues to repeat itself, like let's say the grandparent is <clears throat> um, an alcoholic and then the parent is an alcoholic and then the child is an alcoholic, right? And it's this pattern of this drama, this wound, this lesson that continues to get passed on and on and on. That's the trauma. That's what we carry on. And it's not just that. I mean, that's just one example. So for me, it has been this fear, this fear of being seen, this fear of being known, and this fear of being myself. And when I'm talking about myself, I am talking about when I become aware and remember that I am a soul, not just this body, not just this person here in this body, but I am this infinite soul. And as I dig deeper and I do more and more work, I remember more and more of who I am. And when I remember, and by the way, this is 
true for everyone. So the more that you do the work, the more that you open up to your own gifts, abilities, and remembering what you have done in past lives and what you are capable of. Um, so anyway, you remember more and more of what I have done and bring, and when we remember, we bring it up to the now. So a lot of times we're like, oh, um, I know, or I had a reading where I was, let's say this very successful entrepreneur. Well, as soon as you become aware of that and acknowledge it and you see it, you bring all of that knowledge and information to the now. And this is why we are growing and evolving and awakening so quickly, because that's how it's happening. You ever heard about the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records is a infinite library of books that has every single, everything that you have ever, ever done. Like everything you have thought, everything you have done, everything that you have spoken to anyone or anything throughout all of your lives. And is that just you? It's every single human that's been here and animal and house and art and tree and anything that is you can read the records of a house you can read the and, and you're like what a house it was just built yes just like you know a person is just born um trees flowers everything have this akashic records that you can open and read and, and get wisdom from it so you are bringing back the wisdom of what you have done in past lives now for hundreds of years, the Akashic Records have served to show us our old trauma. I am going in different directions here, all over the place. Um, I'm just becoming aware of that. Okay. Um, they, they have shown us our drama. Oh, you died as, you know, you drowned in, in an ocean and now you're afraid in this life, you're afraid of, of water, right? And that awareness comes up and then you can face it and release it and re release that part of the fear that you have now. So a lot of times it's all about the drama, right? Oh, this happened, you know, or, or you were a terrible person and you murder many people. And then you bring that trauma here and you're like, oh my gosh, and like, what did they do? You carry all of this. And we have been using the Akashic records for the purpose of like, what trauma did we have before that is affecting us now so that we can clear our our karma or our issues right now on this lifetime and move on. But now about the last 20, 25 years, this has shifted. It has shifted to using the Akashic records to remember and bring forward the good things, the positive things that you have done throughout your life, lives, <laughs> right? And so now you are able to go back and like I said before, look at when you, like, let's say you, you're an entrepreneur and you're like, oh, how do I do this? Well, you know, you go back to the Akashic Records, you bring back the times that you were a successful entrepreneur and how you did things. And then you have all of that knowledge and wisdom and experience here in the now. And then you bring that knowledge out in your actions, in what you're doing in the way you show up and then you can have all of that wisdom in the now so that you can bring to fruition becoming a um a successful entrepreneur in the now or if you were a doctor right if you've been if your life has always been in in um in medicine and helping heal people you have all of those years and then you bring it back and then everything happens to you so easily you learn it so much faster this especially uh, true for me, um, or specifically, I should say, specifically true for me in that I will look at a book, read a book or learn something from someone uh, about healing. And it's like, snap of the fingers, I can do it. It's that fast. It's like, oh, yes, I remember. It's almost as if like, yeah, of course, I've, I've done that. And then all of that knowledge just pops into me and I'm able to do it. I am pretty sure this happens for you guys as well. Just pay attention. Pay attention of how you are receiving the information and how quickly you are shifting <coughs> into that new part of you, that new information. And are you able to do it? And the answer is yes, you are. This is why the more that you dig deeper, learn with other people, books or, or 
seminars or whatever it is that is calling your soul to dig into, the more that you dig into these areas, you learn it and it's yours. It's yours for the taking. There is no need for you to practice it more or um, actually you do need practice, but that's for a different reason. And I'll touch on that in a second Um, or have all of these years of experience for you to have the confidence that you actually can do it. So the part of practicing is not so that you can do it better, which of course, the more you do it, you do do it better, but it's not for that reason because you've already done it thousands of times. The practicing is so that you can trust yourself that you can do it, so that you can believe that you can do it. That is why you put it into practice. So the more that you practice the things that you are learning, the more that you remember that, yes, I've done this, and the more that you open up into more things, meaning remembering more things that you have already engaged in, and then you bring them to fruition. Does that make sense? I hope it's making sense. And in terms of your fear, going back and circling back to the beginning of the podcast, you are going to have fear every single time that you step into something that is new to you in this lifetime. And every single time that you have fear about something, that is your clue that is is exactly where you're being asked to go forward, to dig deeper, to look into that. Because if it's bringing up fear, it means it's important. And the fear is your ego keeping you from doing that important work. And I'm pausing here a lot because this is a really big aha moment, right? You have the fear. I had the fear of telling my husband and my family that I was going down this path of spirituality. And when he found out, I was already about three months into my spiritual journey. Um, And just to clarify here, some people do three months of spiritual work and they're actually working on themselves about two or three days a week, maybe 30 minutes each day. And that will be about an hour and a half per week, right? And so an hour and a half per week times four, that's six hours a month. And six times three is 18. So that will be 18 hours of work for three months, right? And I want to clarify here that the type of work I did in three months, I worked about an hour a day, not per week right? So that's seven hours a week, right there. That's 28, 28 hours in one month. Let's just run that to 30 to make the math easier. So that's 90 hours of work that I had already done in three months. You see the difference? It's a huge difference here. When, um, when, I'm, when I speak about my spiritual journey and how deep I was in it in three months, that's 90 hours of work, okay? And if you're doing spiritual work and you're doing it once a day, well, I mean, once a week or two or three times a week, it's not comparable to the three months. It's going to take you longer, you know, more months to get to the part that I was because of the intensity, right? And of course, if you're doing more than that, let's say you're meditating every single day for two, three hours a day, then you're going to be even further than I was at that time, right? Okay, just putting that out there so that you can get a sense of um, from where you are according to the speed of your work and where I was according to the speed of my work at that time. Okay, so (coughs) when this happened for me, the universe just orchestrated a beautiful way of having me to explain and tell my husband what was happening. And I did, and he freaked out. Of course he did, because he had no idea about anything. And I was already three months into it. So I was already very aware of a lot of things. I already understood things on a completely different level than you know three months prior. And I had already worked through a lot of my fear. And here is my poor husband, 
hearing this out for the first time ever as a first time rookie, right? Like, whoa, of course it's going to freak out. And I saw him and I understood him and he was scared. Let me tell you, it was like a huge fight in my, in my home here. But at the same time, I felt good. And I felt good, not because he was scared and we were having a fight and there was chaos in my home, but I felt good because I was out. That big, gigantic elephant I was carrying within me was out of the bag. And it had such a beautiful feeling of relief, of freedom, of like, I can breathe now, right? And that was an amazing confirmation that it was that I was on the right track. Because if I had fallen into the fear, again, here with the fear of, oh my gosh, what have I done? This is terrible. He's gonna leave me. My marriage is over. I messed it up and all of that. It's all fear, right? And completely forgotten about the work I was doing, the things I was becoming aware of, all of the things that I now knew that I didn't know three months prior. If I had fallen into that, then my spiritual journey would have ended and I would have felt guilty and bad that I had done something wrong. But that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because I was really deep already into my spiritual journey and I was sure of what I knew and who I was and I was becoming. See, when there is doubt, then it's really easy to go into the fear and let go of your dream. But when there is no doubt, when you have really tuned into who you are and what you want and what you're doing here in, on, on this earth, then all of the chaos, all of the mundane things of everyday life becomes something that is uncomfortable, but at the same time, it expands you and it feels good. It feels aligned. And I can't explain this to you any better, I don't think right now, as that feeling. I think you just have to experience it. It's this, this, this feeling of peace. It's a, it's a feeling of peace, of awe, because you are standing up and remembering who you are and you're not forgetting it. Like it doesn't matter what the outside sources are telling you or throwing at you. You are just sure enough of who you are and you are able to hold space for those around you who may not see what you're seeing, who may be completely against what you're doing, but you are allow them to be them and to have their experience and you see them with love and light as you still remain holding on to your own true light. So this is the message. When you have that fear of doing something or wanting to to go somewhere or whatever it is that is like, I can't because what would happen, right? So many people are in like in, in relationships that are not healthy for them, but they're so fearful of being alone. What if I never find someone again? Some people are like really afraid of going out there and following their dreams. It could be an artist, it could be singing, it could be, you know, anything that is so fearful because what if I fail? What if people laugh at me? These are the things that keep us from moving. But if you have a huge fear about something and it keeps coming up, it is because it's important. It's a way of you to shine your light, to be more of you, to share your light with others, to raise the frequency of the planet, to do what you are meant to do when you are here. I mean, you came here when you decided to come here. (laughs) Those, Those are the reasons to work through your fear and to see what's on the other side. And I promise you, On the other side of that fear, when you gather your strength to walk through that fearful door, it is so much easier, beautiful and light. And you're going to say, 
Oh my goodness, I can't believe that I held on to all of this for so long without taking that step. And it could have taken you years to cross that threshold of fear. It could have taken you months or weeks or whatever it is for you. But I promise you that once you do it, you almost feel silly at, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was so scared of that. That's how it feels. I have done this many times and I have had that feeling every single time. And it's not just me. My clients have the same realizations. I had a client who was in a very complacent relationship for years, like years. And it was so complacent and so unfulfilling that it felt as if she'd been in this relationship for um, a couple of years, like let's say three or four, when in fact they had been together for about seven or eight. You see what's happening here? You get so complacent, complacent that time just kind of like sits still. It's just like, what's happening, right? Like it's the same thing, the same thing over and over, over and over, over and over. Nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. And it feels like it, like it can't be that I have, quote unquote, wasted so many years in this space because it only feels like this much. But this is what we get into. We get into this part of being really comfortable in the discomfort that we have. And we remain there because that discomfort is something that is known, something that we recognize, something that we're like, I really not having that much fun here. However, at least I know what it is. And if I let go of this, I have no idea what's on the other side. Therefore, that's scary. I'm going to stay here even though I'm not happy. And that's what keeps that, that cycle of moving on and continuing to move on and continuing to move on in the same thing and letting time just go by, right? How many of you have done something and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, another year went by and that dream of writing the book is still in my head. That dream of taking a vacation to Europe is still in my head. I haven't done anything about it. I still don't have any funds saved up to do that or to realize that. Or going to school to finish my degree. It's been seven years and I'm still thinking about it. I don't even remember if I remember the first courses I took. I only have two or three courses left to get my degree, yet I am wasting or spending all of these months, all of these years without enrolling, without taking action to actually finish it. Why? Why is that? Because of the fear of what will happen afterwards. What can I do with this? Can I actually do something? Am I good enough to actually do that? If I finish that degree, especially there's so many people like this who have two to three credits left to finish their degree and get it and they don't do it. Why? It's a fear of, can I actually do it? Do I have to compete with all of these younger people, people who have had this and done it before? Wow, there's so many people of this. Would I ever even be able to get a job in this? Am I going to, right? So these are the fears that keep us from completing our dreams. But if you have a fear, and it's a big fear, then the reminder is it's because it's important. It is your way of shining your light. So work through that fear. Find a way to do it. Find support if you need support to get through it. This is what I did. I mean, I didn't know I, was, I had any fear to begin with, but I knew I had to change something and I got a mentor and then I found out all of this stuff. But this is why I'm telling you, if you're finding yourself with fear and you don't know how to release it, how to move through, how to actually take action, because I can tell you, hey, just take action and then it's over, right? Once you go through that door, you're outside and you know it, that's it. But it is actually taking that step that is the hard thing and that's where a lot of people need some support some mentorship or somebody to grab you by the hand and pull you over the other side um i was telling you the story about this client who was in the relationship for so many years and 
she knew he was complacent. She knew he wasn't satisfying. She knew everything, but she had so much fear. And here is what is really important and interesting. Most of the fear was about how, how am I going to look or uh, when I do this, when I speak up about how I feel and how are they going to feel? So taking responsibility for somebody else, which we can never do because we're never responsible for anyone else except for ourselves. So when she finally was able to work through the courage to speak her mind and say, hey, this is not working out for me, blah, 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 whatever, whichever way she did it. It was this huge relief. It was this huge relief for her. And the response she got was exactly what the guys had told her, which is the other person feels the same about you. That you're both being complacent, you're both very comfortable and you both know that this is not it and you both are not getting the most out of life from this relationship and not only that it was this huge relief like wow i did it finally there it is and now it's being received so much better all of the fears that she had built up she couldn't bring herself up to say it through all of those months uh before none of those happened none of those big gigantic fears realized it was only this really well taken experience that she had and then after the fact both of them both parties right her and her ex at this point uh both went off their separate ways and immediately they each began to see huge expansions and abundance and good things coming their ways. He went off to uh, one side and he immediately got a really good job where it had been years that he could not attain a job that he really liked that was paying well. And this like, he like the relationship ended and he got this amazing job like right away. It was within the week, like so fast. She went the other way and she got people telling her that her face was lit up, that she looked different. It's because she had dropped all that weight that she had been carrying, right? Um, she met people that were amazing and beautiful and treated her in a way that she had been craving for years. Like the whole thing just showing up for her. Like she wasn't looking for it, it just happened. Everything began to unfold in a more positive, abundant way for each one of them when they were both there in that relationship, holding on, holding on, because he was so um, comfortable. He was so comfortable. They knew what they had and they didn't know what they would have if they moved forward. So, and she also said, I can't believe I waited this long. It wasn't as hard as I had imagined. So I'm telling you, I know how it is. I know that opening that door, crossing that threshold is always the hardest thing because we make up, we build up the fear, we feed the fear and we make it into the greatest things that could ever happen that are bad. But when we actually do it, it's none of that. It's so easy. It's so much simpler. So do it, go through that threshold, work through your fears and get to the next part, which is more ease, more love, and where you get to shine your light, where you get to expand your soul, where you get to learn and share more of who you truly are. And with that, I'm ending this podcast. I went a little bit over uh, the time that I usually put on. If you are really tuning into this and loving the messages that are coming through, please like, leave a review, send me a message. I love to hear that. The, um, if you subscribe to this and you leave a review, a positive review, hopefully, <laughs> uh, that is what makes more people find it. And please share, share, share with your audience, with the people that you love, that you think that you will really um, find value to this podcast and what's coming through. And if you're uh, feeling that 
you want a little bit more information on how to anything in your journey, reach out and we can chat and I can help you find any way that um, will be best for you. You can also check out my website and just send me a message. All right, with that, I'll let you go. I love you so much and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.